cool. Hi everybody, how are you doing? I'm doing great because I know that I have something special for you. I'm going to show you how to make a YouTube. It looks like this. Well, now it's a MeTube, but if you make yourself, it'll be a YouTube. Let me show you how to make it. It's very easy. You just take a paper tube, also called a toilet roll, and then you make it so that it looks like yourself. The YouTube has a basic figure like this, a basic body, maybe with an undershirt or an underwear. And then you can add on any types of clothes that you like. Like me, you know, I'm wearing my favorite uh, orange jacket. Now, I don't know what you look like, so I have made a few different colored versions. Maybe you look more like this, or perhaps like this. Maybe you are really tall, or quite tiny, or flat. Whatever you look like, this is the craft you've been waiting for your whole life. Now, let me show you how to analyze yourself. Now, this is me. Well, I guess that's enough. Uh, now you need to transfer your personal traits to the toilet roll. I mean the tube. Let me show you how to make the basic figure. You take the toilet roll, you paint it uh, white, and then you draw the little mouth. And it's about 2 cm wide. If you have a big mouth, you may want to have that uh, line longer. If you have a small mouth, maybe you should make the line smaller and then you make a little cut and then you press in so you press in like that and you squeeze in on the sides a bit so that it's a nice open smile then you cut two of these out of any type of cardboard that you glue on top you can glue one to the bottom as uh, well that's uh, up to you but definitely on top then you make two tiny little bits like this. Look at these tiny, tiny little bits. Those I have cut out of just a little piece of uh, cardboard or you can cut it out of the toilet roll itself. If you have a second one, that is. Then you make a tiny little fold, a tiny little fold at the end. And then you put a bit of glue here, glue there, and you stick on the ears on the side. Then when that's painted white, you end up with one of these. You see here is a nice mouth. You have the ears and the thing on top, but you have no face. So now you need to figure out what do I look like? I mean, you know, maybe I have a small nose or a big nose, tiny eyes, big eyes. I don't know what you look like. Do you have a beard? Uh, you probably don't moustache. No, you probably don't have that either. But whatever you look like, you got to kind of figure it out, analyze yourself and draw it on. Then you paint. So I have here my skin color, roughly, roughly. I usually take the skin color and I go across the whole thing, even inside the mouth. Ooh, paint in the mouth. I can go down the whole way, you know, to make a sort of a, a little naked figure. But that's okay because we are going to dress them up later anyway with all kinds of clothes. You can, if you wish, paint underwear directly on unless you want to make the underwear as a separate make. That's up to you. I'm going to show you a bit about that uh, later. But basically you do the uh, skin color twice and then you paint on whatever you wish for the face. I usually go a bit of red inside the mouth here. And I've just done the eyes very simple. I think it's quite cute just with two little black uh, dots. As you can see here, I have painted the underwear directly. Only my shorts is painted on there, but my jacket I have made separately. If you look, you will find toilet rolls that fit into each other like this. That means that one is bigger than the other. So hunt around until you find one that goes inside like this. Now this is just big enough to fit outside the body you see like this. So now you can paint this up in any uh, color you like. 
or you can make a totally different jacket. You have to analyze what kind of clothes do I wear? How do I want to look? And then you make it accordingly, the shape as well as the color. I even have my little box logo here. Sometimes these clothes fit on really well, but if it drops off, here's a little trick. If you take a bit of plastic tape, I mean, you can use the paper tapes as well, but the plastic tapes are particularly useful for this. You put it inside your jacket. You see, now it's totally nice and tight, and of course, you can take it off easily as well. And now comes the fun part. The clothes, the accessories, the hair. Yes, little Einstein can have hair. How about a uh, nerdy hairstyle like this? <laughs> or he can have a more of a sort of a nice guy hairstyle. Oh, I'm such a nice guy. Look at me. Oh, I do my homework every day. Ginger hair. And you can make funny sounds as well, of course. Or how about this one? How about this one? Yeah. Rockabilly hairstyle. Yeah. Rock and roll. You know, then you can sing and stuff. You know, he does now he needs a microphone and a motorbike. And, or how oh, I have a special surprise for you here. Fancy lady, yes, he could be a fancy lady. He can go on sort of costume parties and stuff like that. Look at that, little curls down here. Well, not actually curls, but you can make curls if you like. Let me show you how to make a hair piece. First, you gotta take that old toilet roll that we used. Remember the one that was a bit uh, bigger? The same that we used for the clothes. And then you uh, cut a round piece of uh, cardboard and glue on top and paint it white and cut it to the length that you like to have the hair. Then you take your pencil and you mark where the ears go. The reason for this is because we would like the hair to go below the ears. So you need to cut, first draw it, a slit going up like this, so that you can put it down below the ears. Like I have done here, see I've cut here, I've cut here. So now let's see how it fits. Yes, you see now he's got the hair down uh, to his mouth. So he's covering his eyes. But from here, we just cut the shape of the hair that we like. You can see that this has a, like a split in the middle. So in the middle here, it goes in a split like this. And then it's got these sort of little sideburns, well, tiny little sideburns on this side. And then it goes over the ear, tiny little sideburns. And at the back, well, you can then trim the length uh, of the hair on the back, like this if you like. Now that you know uh, what kind of hairstyle you want, you take your knife and then you got to do some precision uh, cutting. Here I have prepared a uh, couple of uh, toilet rolls that are split open like this. That is so that I can sort of roll them tighter inside each other like this. And then I can put that inside the wig and then support the wig from the inside so that I can make the cut. You see, if you don't have the support and you try to cut, you may ruin the whole thing. The whole thing may just fall apart. I strongly recommend that you use a very sharp knife and get the help from an adult, because this is precision stuff. You cut along here, down like this. There, beautiful, let's try it on. Ooh, white hair, ooh, and long at the neck. Ooh, fancy, right. So now, then of course you paint it up uh, however you like, whatever color you like. Look, here I have put yellow and then some brown stripes, you know, for the, how like the hair flows down and, and all of that. Look, so all these are different. You can see here I have put in um, uh, first black, then white stripes sort of curving like, like a wave, you know, like they used to have in those days in the 50s big sideburns and all that. So you can enjoy uh, coming up with ways of um, painting uh, all these. And of course, if you're not happy with the cut you made, you can draw some more and then cut and adjust it into how you um, like it. But I think this was one was pretty cool. However, I want to show you my very favorite wig. And uh, it looks like this. 
the old biker here and moustache. Look at that. <laughs> Doesn't that look cool? If I put on a biker helmet, he looks totally like a cool old biker on his Harley or whatever chopper he, uh, whatever he has. Or if I take away the uh, biker helmet and put on a big furry fur hat, he looks totally different, doesn't he? Hey, I uh, can even put on a big furry coat and a bit of extra fur here on top. He looks like a Russian Cossack, doesn't he? Okay, so now let me show you how to make a hat or a uh, helmet. See, now we need to make the same piece as we did for the hair, only bigger and wider, as in like wider like this, so that this one can go outside this one. And I have done that by taking a regular toilet roll and then added a little extra piece. When you cut your toilet roll, right, you cut one piece that you're gonna make the, the hat from, and then the, the other one you can slice like that, and you open this piece, you put glue here and here, and then you add this one in to make it bigger. And then it will look like this. You will have, you see here, I have glued here and here, glued on the inside. So now I have a bigger piece that fits on the outside of the hair, like that. And then of course you need to add on a top with cardboard like this, like we always do. Sand the edges a bit so that it's smooth. Then you end up with one looking like uh, this. Now this is your base for any helmet, hat, whatever you want to put on top of the hair. Then, if you want to make a helmet, you have to study the shape of the helmet that you want. And then you draw and you cut just like we did for the hair. So making a hat or a helmet is really the same process as we did with the hair only with a slightly bigger piece so that it fits on the outside. Now, I have prepared for you this. You see, the furry hat had this very sort of furry texture. Now, how did I achieve that? Yes, by adding texture to this piece. And when you wear in your hobby store or your paint store, you can buy different types of products such as this. This is a sort of a thing that you use to um, fill holes or fill cracks in cardboard, or you can mix it with a little bit of paint and use it to create texture. So I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm taking a little bit of white paint to uh, dilute it a little bit, and then I mix this up. Now there are different products you can use for this. So Ask the people in your paint or hobby or art store and they can advise you. Okay, so now I have made a little paste and I'm adding it quite generously to uh, this uh, piece here. I dab, 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 dab. You can just use your imagination to come up with any texture that you like. You can like do wavy lines like this, you can uh, make this lumpy, very lumpy texture like I have here. Uh, depends what you're trying to achieve. I mean, you know, what kind of material do you think that your hat, helmet or clothes, because obviously this works for clothes as well. It works for anything really. If you want to have texture right in the face or a beard, a crazy beard or something, you can also make that from this uh, texture mass. Anyway, when you have added it, you got to put it aside and let it dry. And it really takes a long time to dry because these lumps are quite thick. So just be patient. And then you end up with your texture. Now, onto the texture, you can paint any color. Now, let me show you how I do the color. I have here a bit of dark brown. I'm gonna make it a little bit uh, darker than this one. So this is like a dark furry hat now, but I just sort of dab or go back and forth like this. When you dab, you are bound to get the paint better inside all those little uh, cracks so that you cover up the little cracks, unless you want the cracks to be there, that's up to you. I'm now gonna do just a part of it, let it dry, and then show you how to create even more texture on the outside, if you like. Here, 
I have a lighter brown paint. Let's see what happens when we drag this paint carefully over the texture. As you can see, I'm not painting a flat layer of color. I'm just getting a bit of lighter brown on the outside and then it's dark in the grooves. So by dragging the brush sideways like this and not having too much paint on the brush, you can bring out a different uh, texture. So there's many ways of treating this um, surface texture. You can experiment with, you know, all the mixes and different colors on top of each other and, and then see where you, um, what you get. There, compare this texture to this one and this one. When you work with toilet roll art, you can add many, many layers. And each layer is a new opportunity. I'm gonna show you more in future videos. And if there's something you are especially interested in, write in the comments below and I shall do my very best. Okay, good luck with your uh, YouTube. Come on, meet you. Come on, let's have some fun. Woohoo! Yeah, hoo